What's going on, man? It's your boy, Jesse Holly. Another episode of Unfiltered with Jesse Holly, episode 13. We pumping these things out, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with me. You're far too kind. You could have been anywhere in the world, but I'm so glad you are here with me. I am the sports talk equivalent of Braille. People feel me when I speak, and I got a jam-packed show for you guys today, but you know how I like to do. I like to give my positivity at the top of this thing, because some of y'all ain't going to make it to the end, and that's okay, but make sure you go like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, tell everybody about Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. Tune in all your platforms, your YouTube, your Apple, your Spotify, wherever you listen to it at, we're there. We are absolutely there, so make sure you tune in each and every week. Three shows a week, man. I'm, 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 I'm bringing it to you. I'm bringing it to you hardcore. But uh, let's get into this thing, man. And, and, and my word of positivity is this. Don't waste the wilderness. Don't waste your wilderness. And a lot of times we find ourselves in these wilderness places. And it, it brings me to memory a, a thought of... What you learn in the valley, you can't learn at the mountaintop. See, the mountaintop is a different place than what it is on the valley. In the valley, you really, really, really find out the man or the woman that you truly are. In the valley, you find out who are your true friends and who aren't. In the valley, you find out whatever those things, is it really worth it? How bad do you really want it? How far are you willing to go get it? See, that those, those values and those lessons that you find in the valley propel you to the mountaintop. You don't learn them at the mountaintop. We all would love to have a place perched high at the mountaintop, but you, there are some lessons that you need to learn in the valley. There are some wilderness moments that you need. There are some calluses that need to be formed in the valley. Don't allow those wilderness moments to go wasteful. What you learn in the valley, you will not learn at the mountaintop. But at the mountaintop, you don't get there without spending a little bit of time in the valley. It's a little dark down there. A lot of people don't want to go down there. You want to know what, what separates those from being average to good to great? Those who are willing to work in the wilderness, those who are willing to work in the valley, those who are willing to do something you've never done to achieve something you've never had. See, it takes a, a different type of person to have those moments. See, mountaintop people, they're journey people. They're, 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 they're people who've been through some things. There is some calluses, there's some scars. See, in my life, I look at my life and I look at the scars of my life and it's a constant reminder. Those are the things that tried to kill you and failed. Those scars in your life, those wilderness scars, those valley scars should be reminders or badges of things that tried to take you out. But you refuse to die. And every time you look at them, don't look at them in shame. Look at them in victory. Because every portion of your life is a lesson. And you keep adding those lessons together and you keep adding those wilderness moments together and you will be at the mountaintop. And what you'll find, like the valley, there ain't many people at the mountaintop either. That spot is reserved for the select few, for the elite, for those who never given up, for those who refuse to die on their dreams, on their goals, on their purpose in life. Those people enjoy the luxuries of the views of the mountaintop. Don't waste your wilderness. The mountaintop is waiting on you. Let's go. All right, let's get into this thing, man. Cowboys defeat the New York football Jets this weekend, 30 to 10, in another dominating football game from start to finish. We all have wondered and thought and hoped that we would see the matchup. Aaron Rodgers at AT&T AT &T Stadium versus Michael Parsons and Dak Prescott in the Dallas Cowboys. But it was cut short. Four plays into the season opener for the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers goes out with an Achilles injury. Insert Zach Wilson. And 
they come to town. Now, they don't come to town just with they, – they, they brought their luggage. And their defense is actually Louis luggage. Zach Wilson in offense, eh, more swap meet-ish, more yard sell-ish, estate sell-ish. But the defense is Louis. And so they traveled to AT&T Stadium with that, and I just love – the way that this Cowboys team is playing right now on all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. When you watch this game, the Cowboys had the ball for 42 minutes. The time of possession was so lopsided. It was, it was, it was laughable. When you give an offensive team, the New York football Jets, they had the ball for 17 minutes. And for whatever odd reason, I thought in the experts, I won't put myself in the expert category. I'll put myself in the really, really smart people category. I won't put myself in the expert category. But the experts, they said that the Jets, in order for you to win this football game and to stay in this football game, you got to run the football. Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, two of the be- probably the best combo of backs in the National Football League. I don't know what the hell Nathaniel Hackett was thinking. Because they did it in the reverse. The one thing that you thought or knew they couldn't do, hey, you if I'm a Jets fan, you're saying to yourself, hey, I don't, I don't want to go out here and have Zach Wilson pass the ball a lot. I want to run the ball, slow the game down, not let the defense of Michael Parsons and company kind of just tee off of my quarterback, and then we'll pass when we have to. The New York Jets ran the ball 10 times. Total. Like, in the game. Like, in all four quarters. 10 times. Which is... Crazy man thinking to me. They threw the ball over 30 times. Now, I don't have anything personal against Zach Wilson. I don't. Don't even know the man. I know that his game ain't built to throw the ball 30 plus times in any football game. I know that this offense isn't built for Zach Wilson to throw the ball 30 times plus in any football game. I know that they knew, or at least they should have known, that could not be a true recipe of success to have Zach Wilson drop back and throw the ball 30 plus times in a football game. But for whatever reason, uh, uh, Nathaniel Hackett and and Robert Sala, they, they, they came together and thought this might be a plan that worked. Well, they quickly and surely found out that it wasn't. And the defense began to tee off on them again. The Cowboys, in two football games right now, have held their opponents to 10 points. If we're doing simple math here, ladies and gentlemen, that is five points a game. While they've scored 70, simple math tells us that's what? 35 points a game. I'll take, that any, I'll take that any day. If you, t- if you had told me at the beginning of the year, Jesse, the Cowboys defense is going to hold opponents to five points a game and the Cowboys offense is going to th- score 35 points a game, would you take it? Where you sign me up at? Because that is a recipe for success. And Zach Wilson find out, he found out very early in this football game that it was going to be a very long day. I told you guys last week, one or two things were going to happen to Zach Wilson. He was going to come to the sideline, and he was going to tell folks he was seeing ghosts, or he was going to tell folks that that lady on that airlines about Michael Parsons, that MFA right there, he is not real. And sure enough, Michael Parsons showed up and showed out in a not real situation. I have run out of words pronouns, adjectives, verbs, person, place of things on how to describe what, who is Micah Parsons. We are now talking about him being, I'm I'm confident and comfortable in the saying. And I've been and still am an Aaron Rodgers fan to the core. He is my NFL MCM, has been that way for a long time. He's my man crush Monday in the National Football League. He's been that good for that long. Nick Bosa won the defensive rookie of the year, defensive player of the year, excuse me, last year. But ladies and gentlemen, there is a new sheriff in town. 
I know that it's early. I know that we're two games into this season. But there's not a defensive player in this league, in this world, that is more disruptive, that is more captivating, that is more diabolical in his play than Micah Parsons. More disruptive, more just chaotic, game-wrecking than Micah Parsons. He is the best defensive football player in all of football. I am confident in saying that today. I believe it wholeheartedly. And this ain't some homer take, and I don't give a darn what football team you cheer for. If you're honest with the man or woman that looks back at you in the mirror, you say the same thing too. You say the exact same thing. You have the same stance that I have right now. And I'm willing and almost, I'm not, I don't know if I'm quite there yet. What's saying that Michael Parsons might be the best football player, period. And in any position in this league. I ain't there yet. Patrick Mahomes, even though he's figuring some things out up there in Kansas City, that dude's still a bad man. And so I'm not quite to the point yet where I'm willing to give Michael Parsons just the full-out crown of being the best player in the National Football League. I am giving him the crown of the best defensive player in this league. Argue with your mother. Argue with your daddy. Argue with your auntie. Argue with your uncle. I ain't arguing with you on this. This ain't no argument. That Mike, Micah Parsons is the best defensive football player in the world. He has been runner-up to the Defensive Player of the Year for two years in a row. Barring any major injury, I'm willing to bet that changes this year. I am. I am. This dude is... He's an apex predator. He's the king of the jungle. And and quarterbacks and defense and offensive coordinators and offensive line, they 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 don't sleep well at night. Josh Dobbs next week against the Cardinals won't sleep well at night. He he won't. He won't. Whoever the left tackle is, the left guard, right guard, wh- whoever the offensive line is, they won't sleep well. They won't. Because they know that if Micah Parsons, number 11, puts on a uniform is playing in that game, they're probably going to get embarrassed at some point in time in the game, if not multiple times in a game. I can give you numbers and stats and get off times and all that. You got eyes. If Stevie Wonder listened to the game, he'd tell you. If he just listened... If Ray Charles listened to the game, they tell you, baddest man on the planet. It's the baddest mofo around this town. Who am I? Show enough. Michael Parsons. And I know Dan Quinn just, Dan Quinn probably has to sleep on his back before games because he's so football horny knowing that the next day he gets a chance to coach Michael Parsons in a football game. There's certain things where, you know, you, you know why Phil Jackson was so zen for so long? That wasn't that, that wasn't some book that he read. That wasn't some spiritual journey that he went on. Phil Jackson was so zen because he knew I got the baddest smoke fall around this town. I can sit back on that high chair and and be so calm because I got Michael Jordan. Then Phil said, you know, I can sit back on this high chair because I got the most dominant player and I got the most, I got Michael Jordan 2.0. That's why Michael, Phil Jackson was so calm. It wasn't because of some meditation. He didn't find Gandhi or some book or did, 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 a, uh, 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 did a study with Mother, Mother Teresa. No, no, no. When you have 
Michael Jordan, you know the work's already done. Get out the way. When you have prime Kobe Bryant, prime Shaquille O'Neal, what worries do you have? Dan Quinn sleeps on his back. Probably a couple days a week. Because sleeping on his stomach and dreaming about Micah Parsons sends blood to areas for him where it probably makes it uncomfortable for him to sleep. Don't doesn't need a blue lineman. He don't need a blue diamond. He don't need that. Just think about Michael Parsons. I get to coach Michael Parsons every freaking day. He walks around crotch first. I would too if I was Dan Quinn. Huh. What a freaking job. What a job. I get to coach Michael Parsons. Whew. Offensively, Freaky Mike, Mike McCarthy and company, hooping. They're hooping right now. Him and Dak Prescott got this thing on a rope. And I know there's some of you on the internet as Cowboy fans where I question some of the life decisions that you make. Some of you are unhappy for unhappy sake. Some of you are upset that the sun is out. Like anything will make you, you will complain about anything. This Cowboys offense is so smooth and so efficient. Dak Prescott is such in control of what they're doing offensively. But you find reasons and ways to complain about, well, we could do more. Yeah, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Dak Prescott was 80% efficient in passing. What? See, some of y'all will rather him throw these YOLO balls and and because you want the you want the oh my god, did you see that pass? And you want you want the he he if Patrick Mahomes, you want that. And then you want one or two of those a game, and then you, you want to sprinkle an interception, you complain about that, and then you go, you look up and he goes, Well, he was only 40% completion percentage. Cause then you'll have something to really talk about. But instead of that. Instead of giving you the, the, the wow, oh, my God, I can't believe that throw, he's giving you, oh, that's open, oh, that's open, oh, that's open. Just get the ball to him right now. What Mike McCarthy has done in this new offense has set apart what you saw in the, in the old days. Dak Prescott comes to the line of scrimmage with answers to the defensive questions. Dak Prescott now is throwing throws that he enjoys to throw. See, not every quarterback – can make all the throws in the National Football League. And just because you can throw it doesn't mean it's a throw that you should throw. See, sometimes you want Dak Prescott to stand on the left hash mark, throw an 18- to 22-yard comeback on the right sideline. And then when it sells out of bounds or it's intercepted for a pick six, you go, well, why the hell would he throw that pass? Well, every throw ain't for everybody. And I think he and Mike McCarthy have found this synergy. They have found this 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 collaboration where they're on the same page and they're just saying let's just just take the profit the old saying is you can never go broke by taking profit and if the profit means i'm gonna throw the ball six yards in the flat and he'll gain six more yards that's a profitable play if the next profit is, I'm going to throw a slant route at eight yards and it's going to go for 30 yards, that's a profitable play. If the next play, I'm going to throw a sit route right over the ball to the tight end for eight yards, it's a profitable play. And when you begin to add profit upon profit upon profit upon, upon profit, what you now have is success. See, some of y'all live literally live a real life of, I'm going to make a little bit of profit and then gamble a lot. And then you may win that one gamble, and then you're going to gamble again, and then you lose. And then now you're back to nothing. That's not efficient. What they're doing now is efficient. 83 plays in this football game. 40 runs, 38 passes, or something like that. That's efficient. 32 of 39, an entire football game. We, we, we have to, 
we, we, we have to understand because sometimes we want to make the game of football a complex game, and it's not. There's complexities in it. But again, throw the throw that you like to throw, especially if it's open. <laughs> Don't complicate this. If it's open, throw it. And then go to the next play. And you do that multiple times. When you win those one-on-one battles in the game, more than you lose them, you win football games. Because the first time he turns the ball over, y'all will be on here talking about, oh, Jess, he did it. And shout out to Dak. I love this. If you guys had a chance to look, listen to Dak in the, pre, in the post-game show, a reporter brought up, you know, hey, Dak, this is the first time in a long time you went back-to-back games without an interception. Dak has come to the point where he's tired. He's had it up to here. He's like, you know what? Yeah, but, but what about the year before that? And the year before that? And the year before that? Like, Dak's to the point now with like, yo, listen. I got it. I led the league last year in interceptions. But what about the entire body of work for me? Because there were multiple years that I didn't lead the league in the interceptions. And I led the league in touchdowns, earned efficiency, and yards a game, points per game. But why don't, y'all bring, why don't y'all bring that up? You always find ways to bring up the bad that I did last year. Dak's pissed. He's tired of it. He's like, hey, all right, enough's enough. I've had it up to here with the interception conversation. Let me just play ball. Stop bringing up old stuff all the time. I get it, but my body of work doesn't speak of that. My body of work speaks of taking care of the football. My body of work speaks of smart play. My body of work speaks of nothing but really, truly, honestly, success. So why do you want to bring up the old stuff all the time? We got to move past that, ladies and gentlemen. I think if you ask Dak again, he's going to be uh, – he, he, he's pissed. He's pissed about it. He don't want to hear no more about it. But this offense, it, the distribution of the ball in this offense, when you go back and you watch the prime Green Bay years – you saw that with Aaron Rodgers. You, yeah, you, Aaron Rodgers is going to have his guy. He had – it was uh, 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 was James Jones. Jo- yeah, James Jones or something like that. James Jones. Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson. But then you go and you look and you go, well, tight end had 500 yards. This guy had 600 yards. It, it was – the distribution was all across the board. In two games, eight-plus receivers have at least one catch. And everybody's getting the ball. So the distribution and the efficiency that that Dak and Mike McCarthy is dealing with right now is amazing. It's fun to watch, people. Don't, 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 Don't sour a positive moment and don't sour something good because it doesn't meet your highlight standard. Winning is fun. And this is sustainable winning. And the thing that Mike has kind of realized, he and, and Dan Quinn, they're, they're, they're touching fingers like, ah, I got you. Ah, ah, we're good. And Mike goes, you know what? Our defense is in such control of this game. I'm not going to call plays that purposefully put the ball or raises the percentage of the ball to be in danger. I don't have to. If I have to punt... Did I get to watch that defense go out there and play? Oh, okay, cool. We're we're, we're, we're going to do things where our defense is off the field a lot, resting, so that do they do get back on the field? They're dogs. They're hunters. They're lions. They're, the pride is ready to go. But if I get oh, if I get YOLO with my play calling, we get YOLO with the football. Now we're turning the ball over. We're giving other teams, we're giving other teams confidence, and, and, and we're putting our defense back on the field. That doesn't work in the long run. I want to limit guys like Micah Parsons having to be on the field for a long time because this is a 17 week season, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the winning. Enjoy it. It's fun. Don't be nitpickers. Don't be nit. Pickers. It doesn't look cute on you anyway. It looks, it looks, it looks bad, like acne. Don't, don't, don't wear that. But yeah, great game by the Dallas Cowboys. Another dominating victory. They got a practice game next week against the Cardinals. No. <laughs> the Cardinals are in tank boat. They, they really are in tank boat. So I don't, I don't know what that game is going to look like. I'll break down the film a little bit more this week. Get back to you guys on Wednesdays and Fridays about it. But it, it, it's, it's going to be. 
Cowboys should definitely win that game. That, that shouldn't be a game that the Cowboys, that we're biting our fingernails about. Now, I know the Cowboys in the past have gone into the, to Arizona and it hasn't you know, struggled. But this, this should be, we should, we, we, should, we, should be, we should be bored in the fourth quarter. We should, we should see names in the fourth quarter that we might not might see any other time in, this, in, the, in the year. Like That's how this game should go. But they have to play the game on Sundays, uh, and that's why they do what they do. Cowboys win 30 to 10, dominating victory. Uh, let me say this. Let me say this. They play the Bills in December. I think they're going to beat the Bills. Cowboys will truly be the king of New York. They would have beaten the Jets, the Giants, and the Bills. They would own the state of New York. Huh. We'll see. December's a ways away. But. I think they can beat Buffalo at Buffalo. They would own the state of New York. I'm going to need a Statue of Liberty. I'm going to need four. I'm going to need one with Micah's face on it. I'm going to need one with Dak's face on it. I'm going to need one with Diggs' face on it. I need five. I need one with CD's face on it, and I need one with, like, Freaky Mike's face on it. Just saying that we own this. We own this. They are, they are, the, they are now the Statue of Liberty in New York after we defeat the Bills. But that, oh, I'm, I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead, but, but we'll get there. But, yeah, that's the Cowboys game. Next up is the Arizona Cardinals. I'll get more on that later on this week. But enjoy this, people. Enjoy this. If you're a Cowboy fan, enjoy this. Even if you're not a Cowboy fan, enjoy greatness. Enjoy, enjoy watching the best player in football, at least defensively right now, and Micah Parsons. It's a treat. Don't deny yourself the treat in watching Micah Parsons because he's not human. I'm telling you, the MIB, J and K, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Ford, they looking for him. They looking for him. They said it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a the U.S. is looking for a, pi- a plane, a flight or jet that's running around here on autopilot. That's the MIB. They looking for Micah. Yep. He's in like Frisco somewhere. All right, man, we're going to go around sports. Y'all know I wasn't going to do a show. Y'all know I wasn't going to do a show not talking about my boy. I believe. I believe. Y'all, I'm not, do, I'm not doing the show and not talking about the biggest story in sports. Coach Deion Sanders wins yet another one. A lot of you haters are sitting at home seething. Y'all just waiting for them L's to mount up. But you got to wait another week. Cause it didn't happen this week. Almost. Oh, 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 almost. It almost went down. I know a lot of y'all was sitting at home. And you know what's you know what's funny? Cause 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 haters, <laughs> haters will wait on your downfall. And a lot of y'all was sitting at home scratching your eyes, yawning. You stayed up to two o'clock in the morning, hoping that you would be going, ha! He lost. All that talking and he lost to Colorado State. You got to be sick. You had to be sick. You messed around and missed church on Sunday because you were up at 2 o'clock in the morning watching, hoping, praying, thinking that Prime was going to lose. And he didn't. That's got to suck. That's a suck as a hater. That you stay up way past your bedtime to wait for another man and his team to lose. And they don't lose. You went to bed pissed, sick, upset. You was pulling covers from your old lady. (laughs) You you done pulled the cover off your old lady. You done kicked the dogs out the room. Slamming doors, woke the kids up. All because you a hater. All because you don't want to see the greatest story in college football prosper. The Colorado Buffalo defeated in double overtime the Colorado State Rams. Coach Prime and the Buffs go to 3-0. and Up next, there's going to be a worthy opponent. They had the Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks. Exciting game. I thought the Buffs came out. They were a little bit excited. 10 o'clock game. By the way, 
by the freaking way. I know that this game was already on the schedule, but Pac-12 people, my goodness, don't make no more games at 10 o'clock at night. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. I can't wait to see what the numbers are. Did they come out yet, the numbers for that game? Because you can hit all you want. I saw what the Twitter timeline was talking about. And there's a lot of folks that's my age and, and older. And I'm in the, I ain't going to tell you how old I am, but I'm like, just think about what Mike Gundy said, and that's me. And folks was up. I can tell you right now, well past my bedtime, I'm 930. I'm tucked in, body on, rubbing my feet together. But I was up. I was up watching Prime. Watch him do his thing. Double overtime, Shador went into his Brady mode. 98-yard game time drive. They go into overtime. They win the game. What sullied and soured this victory was some foul, dirty stuff by the Colorado State football team, a player. And, 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 and while Jay Norvell wants to talk about respect and wants to talk about how, who, and what was raised, you have the most undisciplined football team in college football. You blew it. Your undisciplined football team blew it. I think you guys had 18 penalties. Some of them in the most crucial times of the game. But one of the plays that wasn't called a penalty that should have been a penalty. Not only should it have been a penalty, it should have been an ejection. Not only should it have been an ejection, it should have been a suspension. Early in this football game, Colorado's safety, Henry Blackburn, took a dirty hit to Travis Hunter. I mean, when I say dirty, the ball had landed. He had took three or four more steps. And, and Travis Hunter, you can tell he had already relaxed, hit him, hit him all up in here. Ended up knocking Travis Hunter, Colorado's two-way star, out of the game. Not only out of the game, the report came out to the report came out that night that he ended up having to go to the hospital. Report came out today that what happened was be, due to that dirty hit by by Henry Blackburn, Travis Hunter will be out for the next three weeks with a lacerated liver. I'm all for physicality. I get it. Football is a 100% physical game. I want to, you want to, everybody wants to that step in between those 53 and a half by 100 lines. If you don't have the same uniform that I have on, I want to rip your head off. But I want to do it respectfully. I want to do it in between the whistles. I want to do it with you looking me in the eye and I'm looking you in the eye. I don't want to do it dirty. And while there's an extreme level of competition in between, layered in between that, 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 that fine line of competition is respect. There is a brotherhood. There is this fraternity of we are going to compete. And I'm going to try to take your head off. You do the same for me. But we're going to do it within the rules. And when you, when you separate yourself from that, you separate yourself from the sanctity of what the game is, even in its violent state. And Henry Blackburn did that. It was ugly. It was dirty. And if the NCAA won't step up like the, you won't, like the cowards that you are, Colorado State should do something. They shouldn't accept that. They shouldn't allow that type of smear to be put on their name with zero actions done to Henry Blackburn. 
Because I've lost all hope that the NCAA is going to do the right thing. The refs, I don't know how you looked at that play and didn't think to yourself, boy, that's targeting. Even though that it wasn't the crown of the head, the intent of it was targeting. Should have been thrown out. So, Colorado State, you should do something in this matter. There's a report that's come out today that there has been uh, uh, death threats towards Henry Blackburn and his family. I, I, don't, I don't want anything to happen to this kid. This is still a kid at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen. It's still a game at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen. The death threats, a little much for me. Now, he should be dealt with by the authorities, the powers that be, NCAA, cowards. There's some, you should step in. Now's the time. Now is the time you should step in and do something. If not those cowards of the NCAA, then Colorado State, Coach Jay, Jay Norvell, you should do something. You should take action in this thing because that, that, that was an extremely dirty play. And I get rivalries. I've played in rivalries. I've played in uh, high school rivalries. Shout out to my Roselle Rams. Roselle Hillside. I didn't play in rivalries. Roselle, Rawway. I played in rivalries. Duke, North Carolina. Played in them. Cowboys, Philly. Cowboys, Giants. Cowboys, Washington. Done it. Nothing like this has happened before. Not while I was playing. I know people say, well, in the 90s, they, 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 Michael Irvin on turf broke his neck. Not a part of the game. Not a part of the game. Something should be done. Something should be done. But nonetheless, Dion and the Colorado Buffs pulled it through. And, uh, you know, you, you saw in this game, I felt like Colorado came out. And they, didn't, they came out and they didn't play well. It was a little bit too amped. And while I'm absolutely loving everything Dion is doing, I might have a small little critique. Because at the end of the day, and, and I know what you're doing, Dion. I get it. Like you're, you're, you are creating an atmosphere that is electric, that, that, wanna, that, that will make recruits from every part of the country come to Boulder, Colorado. You're going to make the Florida boys, the California boys who are not used to the cold weather, and you got to get it in now because it's going to get cold in Colorado soon, and a lot of folks ain't going to want to come there to see you. I, get, I see what you're doing. Maybe a bit much. Maybe a bit much. I get everyone. You, you, the, the, the Rolodex of Dion friends and family and company, long. I'm talking about name the highway in your city. That's the roll of decks. Long. We see it. Master P, Lil Wayne, The Rock, Kawhi. Kawhi Leonard showed up. Kawhi Leonard showed up to both. Ka Kawhi Leonard showed up to this game more than he showed up to his own games. Holy moly, guacamole. Kawhi, you showed up to a college football game. You won't even show up to the, 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 to, to the Clippers games. Chauncey Billups is there. Colorado alum. Kyle Lowry. Thick Kyle Lowry. Pause. Pause. That is a major pause. You know, but Kyle Lowry, you thick, bro. Pause. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. Young Lou is there. Wally, uh, Gillian Wallow. Uh, you, the list, and, and people, we probably, Polo, uh, what's my moon name? Uh, Polo G. Was it Polo G? No. G -G -G -G. What is it? Key Glock. Sorry. No offense, Mr. Glock. I want no beef, okay? If your name is Key Glock, you got to switch on it. I'm good. I apologize, Mr. Glock. Key Glock, you got all this happening. Game day is there. Big Noon is there. Concerts are happening. Kids forgot they had a football game. The kids forgot they had a football game. I think I mean you see that you see they playing ping pong in the locker room. I'm sure before you I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. But I think Dion doing a little much. 
a, just a little much with the pregame. Not not saying those people can't come. Not saying that they can't be around practice. But at some point in time, they, they got to be on the – get another locker room built. Go get those uh, those containers. They doing that now. Get two or three of them built. Put the folks in there. Put the team over there. Let them lock in. But you got these folks in the locker room minutes before game, before game time. And you want 17, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids to be locked in? When Key Glock is sitting in the locker next to him, you want these kids to be locked in and the rock is standing in front of them? That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. We live in a, we, we live in an ADD society nowadays. Asking these young folks to be locked in when master when 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 little Tucci. You got Lil Tucci in there. He doing a sound. Lil Tucci doing a sound tech check minutes before kickoff. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot for 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 young men. That's a lot. I would have trouble locking in. My favorite rapper is Jada Kiss. If Jada Kiss is in the locker room before a game, I, I got questions. I do. I'm asking him about verses. I'm, I'm, me, I'm, 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 I'm sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. If the locks, LOX is in the locker room before I'm going out to play NC State in college, I'm going to lose it, guys. I'm going to lose it, guys. My mind's not going to be right. The, de- the attention to details that I should be locked in on, I'm, I'm asking Jada Kiss questions. I'm sure Key Glock, again, forgive me, Mr. Glock, for not getting your name right. I want no smoke. But I'm sure Key Glock is somebody's favorite rapper. I'm sure Lil Tucci is somebody's favorite rapper. None of those kids know who Master P is. Not worried about that at all. But now they Googling who is the old man with the It's Personal shirt and the tank chain on. They don't know who Master P is. They eat the rap snacks, but they don't know who P is. Side note, you all know that Master P was not buying no merch. He made that shirt himself. And I'm not mad at you, Master P. Merch is expensive. You went right to the print shop. And you said, hey, give me an XL It's Personal shirt. Mr. Master P signed on it. I'm not giving Dion any of my money or Nike or anybody else. I think it's a bit much, though. I, I think someone in, in, in Dion's camp needs to come to him man to man. I think Dion will listen. I think he respects his coaches and go, hey, coach, not telling you how to do your job. I know that we're building the culture here that people want to come to, especially the young people. But before the game, can we kind of turn it down just, just a little bit? Just, just. Can we boop, boop, pump the brakes a little bit? We don't need Key Glock. We don't need Yellow Beezy. Again, no smoke, Yellow Beezy. I live in Dallas. You live in Dallas. Don't want no problems. But I don't know if Yellow Beezy needs to be in the locker room before the game. I don't know if Lil Tunchi needs to be doing a sound check in the locker room minutes before the game and you're trying to focus in 17, 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Difficult. But... This is why I'm sitting here with you, and I'm not coaching the Colorado football team. But if that's my little two cents, that's my little two cents. Uh, Another story, and I kind of get it. Tyreek Hill talked about his game this week against the New England Patriots and talks about just how horrible the Patriots fans are. Now, I don't want to... Specifically, talk about the Boston fans or the Boston area fans or the Massachusetts fans, but it's been a long history about what Boston type people and fans are. 
And it's one thing to be fans. It's one thing to have a reputation as a fandom. But y'all know. Boston people, Massachusetts people, you know that y'all are a little bit much, especially when it comes to the players that are not the same color as y'all, that come to town. And this ain't, this ain't, Jesse Holly is not breaking any news to anyone. It has been long documented about what they are as fans. And I get it. I mean, I, I, I played well, one of the worst fan bases I've ever played in front of was like Philadelphia. But see, Philadelphia wasn't that type of bad. Our word type of bad. Philadelphia was ignorant bad. And there was a rule in the Holly household when, when we played. When I, my, I'm from New Jersey, for those of you who do not know, welcome to the show. There was rules that I and my family would not allow our female family members and or guests to attend games in Philly. Just didn't. It was too much of a worrisome atmosphere. You have to worry about their safety, and then you have to worry about the men who are accompanying them, their safety. So as, a, as if, if it's my brother or an uncle or a, 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 a friend, not only do you have to worry about your own personal safety, but now you have to worry about my mother's safety. And my mother got a mouth. You ain't going to just say whatever you want to. Monica, she ain't having it. Then now somebody crack her head with a, with a snowball or a battery. Because they do throw, they still throw batteries in, in Philadelphia. At the bus, bottles, feces, they do it all. They do it all. But man, come on, uh, like Boston fans, like fans in general, like fans in general, just, it's a game. Like, at the end of the day, it's, it's just a game. It's a game. I know that you're passionate about it. And I, I, for one, will never understand fandom, fanatics. Um, but it's a game. Don't y'all see at the end of the game, like, no matter how competitive it is, that those dudes come to the middle of the field, they talking, they chatting, they didn't probably had dinner. Like, it's only y'all mad. And I just don't get it. This ain't even like y'all ain't practice. Y'all ain't y'all ain't y'all ain't done nothing. And and you willing that you willing to go to jail or lose your life or 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 or, or, or pay the premium for insurance because now you got to go to the hospital for what? For the sake of the team that you don't even own? For players who, if I'm being completely honest, don't know you exist. When you go to jail because you were arguing over your team, your starting quarterback is not coming down to the precinct and bailing you out. If you're at a Cowboys game and there were some fights this past week, some folks went to jail, didn't see the judge till today, till Monday. You know Dak Prescott no, don't know you. C.D. Lamb may shoot when you no bail. Micah Parsons ain't paying your lawyer's fee. Dan Quinn is not sending a note to your job on why you can't report the next day. You willing to fight over a team that don't belong to you? For players who don't know that you exist? Come on. <laughs> Be better. It, it makes no sense to me. But y'all have at it. I ain't fighting nobody over nothing. Not not a team. Not I don't even own. Not if I own a team. Even still, I'm just going to have you arrested. I'm, I'm not fighting you over, over some sports that you want to control that. But whatever. The injury bug is beginning to hit the National Football League. It's been a bunch of injuries this past week. 
I've told y'all this 100 times. I'll tell you 100 times more. Football is a 100% hurt business. If you have not been hurt playing football, I'm almost positive you didn't play. I'm just being completely honest. You didn't play. Injury buzz going around. Joe Burrow re-injured the calf. Not looking well. I think he's got all that money. But, hey, it happens. Saquon Barkley, low ankle sprain. It's a difference. They say, I'm no doctor, but I did stay in the Holiday Inn Express. The low ankle sprain is good. High ankle sprain is bad. They, they say you're better off breaking your ankle and just going ahead and letting it heal for four for something weeks. Then they get a high ankle sprain with that, when those ligaments begin to get in there. It almost never really fully heals. Deontay Johnson, he's put on the IR, hamstring, Buda Baker, IR. The injury bug is starting to creep up. Cowboys has some injuries in the game. Nick Chubb, devastating injury right now. Nick Chubb, devastating injury happened. You'll see this on Tuesday, but we're recording Monday night. Nick Chubb, who... Ooh, 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 oh. When y'all see the Nick Chubb injury, it don't look good. It, it, it's for sure probably all of the CLs in the knee. PCL, MCL, ACL. Wow. And that sucks for a dude. Nick Chubb is, is a class, class act. If you don't know Nick Chubb, he's the one that's always the running back for the Cleveland Browns. He always has the great... Um, Squatting videos. I mean, he squats. He, he, he get you get on that on that uh, on that sumo bar. Look like it's bending. But that sucks, man. That sucks for Nick Chubb. It's a it's a dirty injury. I add him to the list as well. That's tough, man. Man, I can't I can't stop thinking about that. That's 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 nasty, man. Patrick Mahomes added to his bag. He was like, wait a second now. All these other folks is getting some money. Let's restructure some things so I can get some bread. Not mad at you, Pat. You are the best player in football right now. I know. Mike is, Mike is on your heels, but you are the best player in football, and, and you have been for a long time. I don't know if that's going to change anytime this season, but Mike is coming. Micah is coming. I, I, you know what? I, we talked about this before the show, and I said I wasn't going to say anything, but – there's a little bit of petty in me, and I like a little bit of spicy. I like spice. Your boy, Jay Holly, I like a little spice in my life. Stephen A. Smith. Who hasn't Stephen A. Smith beef with? That's a real question. His latest beef, two things about Stephen A. Smith. He, he, Stephen A. has stepped out of, of, of kind of just being this just on TV thing to now he's doing this thing about all the podcasts. And he came out this week and he talked about he, – he, he failed. He, I'll just be honest. He came out and he talked about Max Kellerman and why that duo didn't work. And I think the way that Stephen A. was kind of saying some things, he thought the people were going to be more on his side. They didn't. They didn't. They, he was just saying, like, you know, he, people – he said that Max – Kellerman wasn't an athlete and he wasn't a journalist, so it kind of just didn't work and he just didn't like working with him. A lot of people bounced back and said, Stephen A., we had no problem with Max. You, you're trying to say publicly that it, 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 we didn't like it as a fan base and everybody's saying we didn't have a problem with Max. It was more so that you didn't like Max putting you in your place more often than not on your show. Eagles get involved. But in that, one of the most probably viewed moments between Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman was they had the great Terrell Owens on the show. And in that time, we were in the height of racism. The Colin Kaepernick thing was happening and all this stuff was happening. And, and T.O. began to get on there and was talking about how he felt that Max Kellerman was kind of more black than Stephen A., whatever that means. 
I mean, clearly, but not by color, but whatever that means. Stephen A. took offense to it. Of course he would. They get into this back and forth spat, and then of, the one thing about Stephen A. that you, you'll lose a lot of times is that he's on TV every day. And he'll remind you oftentimes I have the number one sports talk show, morning show, 12 years running. And he does. But, and when you have that, when you have that, when you have that platform, you can say what you want. You get the chance to say it every single day. T.O. doesn't. They had their, their beef. And then it came to Twitter. Oh, it came back to light. And there's no better place than a nice little Twitter beef. And there's no better place than a nice little Twitter beef to with petty people. Because some people take the high road and go, you know what? Not responding. That's not T.O. That's not Stephen A. Smith. So they get into this back and forth. And Stephen A., ah, I think Stephen A. kind of pulled the, he kind of pulled the lady card. He's like, oh, don't let me expose you. I'm like, ah. Here we go. Not, not to expose it. I just, I just, exposing wears me down to no end. Let me expose you. Tio's like, brother, I've lived my whole life in the, in, the, in the public eye. Expose me about what? And then it all comes out. Stephen A. says on this show today that, you know, um, that Tio, then he, he, he makes more assumptions that Tio, after that interaction on the, on the show, was T.O. called him more, kept Max more black than Stephen A. Stephen A. then says that after that, T.O. tried to sue him. Had lawyers call ESPN and tried to sue him. I'm assuming for defamation of character, it didn't work out. But then now Stephen A. is like, well, I can wonder why he was trying to get money. And he's like, money. I'm like, golly, that, that hurts. <laughs> so he's assuming that T.O. had money issues and was trying to get a little bit of bread out of T out of either ESPN and or Stephen A. I find it hard that T.O. needs money. Like, I'm around a lot of former players and, like, what these guys get for an autograph appearance, and now T.O.'s a Hall of Famer. I mean, T.O. can probably go get, especially during the football season, I mean, easily twenty to 30000 a weekend by autograph signings and so on and so forth. I don't think T.O. needs money, but, hey, I'm a broke boy. I'm a broke boy. I need money. I don't speak for nobody else, and I ain't trying to expose nobody else. But, yeah, that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you all being here. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't expose me. Well, expose me. Yes, expose Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. Expose it. Tell somebody. Tell everybody. Pull back the curtains of Jesse Holly and Unfiltered. I want Unfiltered to be exposed. If you have pictures of me getting out of the pool while it was closed, please do not disclose those to anybody. Do not expose those. I am a grower, not a shower. But please show my show so it grows. I want my show to be a grower, so I need you to show it. Please show everybody. Unfiltered with Jesse, Holly, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Mr. Fourth and Long. You can find me in all those places. Unfiltered, unfiltered. I want unfiltered. I'm going to start like this. Play unfiltered over and over and over again as you sleep. I want it ingrained in your mind. Unfiltered, unfiltered, unfiltered. Unfiltered with Jesse Holly, man. I thank you all for being me, man. God bless you guys. Until next time. Remember, never let anyone tell you that their life is better than yours because it's your life. Eliminate the contingencies. I'm out.